Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's new AI project. This is a huge surprise to the industry because AI till now seems very gimmicky. It seems like weird gimmicky features have been forcefully added into our favorite software. But Adobe Firefly is extremely different. So let me take you through all the cool tools and features that Firefly has. Now the first feature let's talk about is text to image. So, so the text to image feature is as simple as typing in a description of your image. So for example, we've typed in here pets reading a book in a magical forest. And as you can see, the pets are being generated in a magical forest reading a book. And I love the diversity of the animals, the type of animals, the forest, everything. Apart from that, as you can see, there are quick actions that you can play on, which we've never seen with an AI tool before. For example, you can quickly change the art style on the go immediately. You can even change it from a realistic photo to a graphic design to an art as was seen in the trailer. You can even see things like movement themes, concepts. If you like an art style, this will make it according to that art style. Apart from that, it is super user friendly. So just click on show similar, a button on top and it will show you similar results as compared to a certain choice. You will be happy to hear that Adobe has pledged that they are not gonna copy an artist's work and then replicate it and use it for their AI. Instead, they are gonna be paying a lot of artists different kinds of commissions and payments so that artists can willingly put their images and art online and the AI will learn from them, not from random images they pick up from the internet. I think that is a huge thing and you guys might be able to earn from this platform as well. Now the next feature which was super popular in the trailer was Adobe Firefly's text effects. The text effects are what get magical and new. You can type in any font, you can type in your name, you can type in your brand's name, and it will pick up a style that, you, that you've written down. So here, as you can see, I've, we've written melting chocolate and the text yum comes out as melting chocolate. And it doesn't seem like it's been created in something like Mid Journey. It seems as if an artist has gone into Illustrator or Photoshop and made these. This is where generative AI comes into play, where it's learning from different kinds of art styles or from what people expect, tries to randomize those objects around that. Chocolate is a perfect example because we see different kinds of chocolate. And as you can see, again, we can quickly on the fly, in a very user-friendly manner, change the text style. We can give it different fonts, which of course we get from the Adobe Fonts library. We can even give it different text effects. The next part is something called in-painting and it's still in development, so don't expect it too soon. But in painting allows you to just, just roughly highlight a subject as if you're highlighting it in Photoshop. And from there, you can immediately replace that object or subject with something that you've typed in with a text prompt, essentially. So you can either remove it like, a, like an object remover, or you can use it to replace it with something else. So if you have a cat in an image and you wanted a dog instead of that cat, you can just highlight the cat and type in a small dog and it will replace the cat with a small dog. And you can see even in the demo here that it's actually super impressive. They're using their Adobe Sensei's technology, generally fine in Photoshop, but they've brought it into this new set of tools, which will be super helpful. And I'm hoping that in the next big Photoshop update, this comes out. Now I couldn't find a lot of videos for this, but essentially any image or vector or illustration can now be recolored using AI. So you just give it your artwork, illustration, whatever, and you tell it to recolor it in a retro format or maybe in a hip hop kind of format or maybe in a 3D realistic format. And it will create multiple versions of your illustration. So if you're an illustrator creating illustrations on your computer, rather than manually creating multiple variations and sending it to your clients, you can now create one main image and then try to replicate it using, using Firefly to create these multiple styles. Till now, AI was learning on its own. You know, it would collect images from either the internet or a library of assets that, the, that a company fed it. But now imagine you can teach the AI according to your own style. So if you're a photographer, you can put in your photographs, you take, a f take photographs in a certain style. Maybe you want illustrations based on that style. It will learn your photos and then create illustrations based on those photos. Or if you want an image of a flower based on an image of a bee, it will learn from that image of the bee and try to create the same depth 
try to create the same backgrounds, try to create the same kind of color that was popping out from the first image. You guys love, you guys eat up the 3D content that I put out. It's It's been proven video after video. Now, Adobe Firefly is bringing in 3D magic essentially. So we already saw that you can convert text to these 3D images. But apart from that, you can actually bring in your 3D models. So for example, you have a 3D model and you want to recolor that model, put new materials on it. So for example, you have a 3D landscape. You want that 3D landscape to look like a Zelda landscape, like a Breath of the Wild Zelda landscape. You can essentially have that kind of style being given to your 3D objects. So this AI is not only recognizing 2D images and objects, it's also recognizing 3D environments, 3D objects, and how 3D planes work. Spline software is actually gonna have a lot of competition from this. Another cool feature is actually gonna be sketch to an actual final product. So the sketch could be for a logo design and it will convert that logo that sketched out logo into different variations of digital logo. So a basic B can be converted into different types of logo designs of the letter B. And all of these will actually be editable forward. In tools like Illustrator, you can just import it there and edit it. And of course you get vectors, etc. So these will be vectorized. These are not just flat images anymore. Well, AI has come a long way. It's not just creating flat dummy images. It's creating real life vectors that you can edit and use in your artwork. Graphic designers and marketers are going to be super happy because of this. Now this isn't new, so I'm not going to give this a big chunk of my time, but much like Canva's AI, you can essentially put in images of the style you like. Maybe you saw a graphic design or an image on Unsplash and you wanted to create something similar to that. You can just feed their software this and it will study it. You can even give it a prompt. So you can ask it to make templates for Instagram carousel and it will create templates for Instagram carousel based on that style. But since this is a part of Adobe, it's gonna have its own style, it's gonna have its own clauses and its own features. Okay, another big one, and this is mind blowing almost. If you put in an image of say a house in middle of a meadow, and you type in create a winter landscape and it will literally convert that scene into a snow land. It'll be as if there was no summer in that image ever. Choose from different variations so you can make it less wintry, you can make it more wintry. Once again, huge shout out to Adobe for this. This is a big one. This is something that could change video editing even or photo editing in the long term. All right, my final thoughts. Now there are a lot of other tools they're working on. So this is not the final tool list. There's gonna be a lot more features coming in. The first thing is that it's not using this as a gimmick. They're not trying to put this into every software and saying this is revolutionary. They're saying this is something which already exists and it's gonna help your creative process. That's it. It's not promising you magical results, even though it is delivering some magical results for sure. The second thing that I really like is that we can customize it according to our own needs. So we don't need to depend on an AI. We can create our own AI of sorts on the For example, I showed you the image where we were feeding in dog images, right? So that, that again is what we can do. We have control over AI rather than other companies which are focused towards AI kind of taking over or AI taking responsibility, etc. No, we don't need that. Designers don't need that. And Adobe knows it. So it's creating based. The third thing is how responsible Adobe is being. First of all, any image posted on Behance, etc. will have a tag where people will be able to see that this was created by AI. So no artist can make a fool out of you. No artist can use this tool for uh, incorrect purposes, for purposes which are malicious in nature. Not only that, Adobe is taking ownership of a lot of these assets. So a lot of the assets that will, that will be used by the AI to create your designs will either be owned by Adobe or by a third party creator. And that third party creator will not only be getting attribution, but also be getting paid for a lot of this. I think this is not only a good image for Adobe, but also it is great for creators, designers, who felt cheated, who felt betrayed by AI. But now it's more useful than betrayal in any form. I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Click on the thumbs up will be a huge support to the channel and a subscription is free of cost. Click that little red color voluptuous subscribe button. I will see you every week just like this. So make sure you come back and watch. I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.